everyone. Uh, welcome back from lunch. Uh, it's time to start. So uh, my name is Jan Erik Solem. I'm here to talk about editing OpenStreetMap with Mapillary. So Mapillary is a service for crowdsourcing street level photos where anyone can contribute photos anywhere uh, using simple tools like smartphones, action cameras, uh, anything that can take pictures geotagged. And um, the photos are then combined across users across time into one single representation of that place. This is what it looks like uh, when people are mapping. So you can do it from a bike, uh, you can do it while you're walking, uh, you can put a phone in the front window of your car, or as you saw in the missing maps talk earlier here today, uh, uh, you put an action camera in the window and then you just take pictures. Um, and then all of these photos across users are then combined um, and matched together. And so this is what it looks like. Uh, here's an example of um, a, a sequence from a park next to a river uh, in Sweden, where we're from. And uh, this is a place where the mapping vans will never come. They will never drive and map this area so that you can see what it looks like. But anyone can go here and do this. And in fact, this entire town, uh, it's a fairly large town, was mapped by almost one person only in the span of a month. And uh, so what you can see here is, um, well, you can play these sequences. You can move around in the space like you're used to on, on Street View, except that this is now generated from single images that are taken by uh, any user. Um, you can jump to related photos nearby, and um, you can also edit. So anyone can go in, anyone can go in and uh, edit anything on the map. So if you see a photo that has an incorrect GPS position, you can move it. If there's something sensitive in a photo, you can hide it. Uh, you can blur parts of photos. Uh, we blur faces and license plates ourselves, of course. Um, and then on the map view, you can filter based on users. Uh, you can filter based on time. If you want to see what a place looked like at a specific point in time, you can compare periods, things like that. Um, we also recognize objects in the images, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. And uh, so our history with OpenStreetMap is fairly short. Um, since we're a young company, we launched this service in February last year. And when we were getting, to, getting ready to launch that, um, we were uh, talking a lot with the local OpenStreetMap communities to figure out how, do we, how should we interact with, uh, with the OSM community. And we came up with these, uh, this was very early on in our, in our history, we, but we came up with these ground rules and like let everyone derive any data they want from our photos, use our photos any way they like for improving OpenStreetMap, including all the data that we extract with computer vision from the photos, uh, GPS traces, whatever you can find on our site, uh, go ahead, use it to improve OpenStreetMap. There's a specific page up with details and examples for OSM. Uh, the URL is here. Um, and then we went to State of the Map last in Washington last year, and uh, and that's when we got really hooked on uh, on OpenStreetMap. And so over that summer, we were thinking a lot about how can we make. So now that we have these ground rules and we allow OpenStreetMap to use all of this content, so how can we make that available and accessible in in a good way? So we started looking at the at the ID editor, and my colleague Peter um, announced in a blog post in, in August. Uh, that we now have our own fork of ID where uh, our photos, so you can go in and you can see ground level photos um, for the purpose of editing. And that one then got in October into the main ID and has been live ever since then. Um, but between October and now, some things happened in our company and um, we uh, launched something called traffic sign recognition. So we're recognizing in all of these photos that people are collecting around the world, we're recognizing traffic signs. And so we launched that in uh, January. And um, ever since then, we were thinking out how can we make this available as well. And so earlier this week, uh, we finally did it. I finally had time to do it. So it's now in, again, in our branch, but eventually it will, it will uh, hopefully come out in the main ID branch as well. So uh, when I say traffic sign recognition, uh, it's, uh, we're a computer vision team, so we analyze the images, we extract information, and, and one of those things is, is the traffic sign. So in, on this map, you can see icons marking 
here's a photo where we recognize this traffic sign. And incredibly useful information to figure out where should I go in and edit first. And um, so we launched this last week of, of January. And we got a lot of feedback in the week afterwards. And people asked for, how can we correct this? Because like, these are not, it's not truth, right? Like, there's a probability attached to each of these. And sometimes they're not correct. So people wanted a way to go in and fix this so that we could train our system and make it better. So we had to do that. And so uh, I think two or three weeks after that, we launched uh, APIs for contributing fixes back to this and a traffic sign game, which was a, a URL on our site you could go to, and you got shown random images, and then you, uh, you verified or corrected those images. So in that game, there's now about 1.5 million signs that are being uh, randomly selected for you from the US. It's actually North America. Canada is in there, too, uh, and EU. And then so far, we have about 125,000 images uh, that have been manually verified and edited. And this will then feed into the next iteration of our classifiers. Um, so this is what it looks like. You see uh, images, you see signs that are marked, and you see little icons showing what signs they are. And you can go in and correct that. Um, and in both of these, we, um, we used uh, our own font that we, uh, is a traffic sign icon font. Uh, some people can geek out on, uh, on these things. And, uh, we thought we'd put an end to ugly uh, map icons with traffic signs in the process. So, so we put this out. And uh, actually, it has a very active contributor base. Um, but back to ID. So this is what it looks like. This is, the, uh, this is what we released earlier in the week. Um, so you can, next to the mapillary photo layer, which is ground level photos, you can also select traffic signs. I don't know if the video is playing. Yeah, there it is. Um, so all of these signs are now also available in ID. So this means that every time someone takes a photo for Mapillary anywhere in the world, upload that photo, it's immediately available for anyone editing with ID. And I know what half of you are thinking. What about Jossum? So <laughs> there was one laugh. Uh, there's actually a Google Summer of Code working on that as we speak, as I speak. And uh, this guy, uh, Nokutu, uh, is being mentored by a group in, um, in Belgium and making good progress already. So uh, the last uh, thing I heard on the emails were uh, he was asking for APIs to submit changes back, which means that I think uh, he's gotten very far. So there's good progress on that, and I hope that by the end of the, uh, this project there will be a, a great JOSM plugin for everyone to use as well. So... Um, this is, this is still early days. Like, uh, we've been live a little more than a year. Uh, but of course, we want to recognize even more things in the images than we do today. So next on the list of that, uh, road markings. So anything on the road surface, uh, recognize how many lanes does this road have, uh, arrows, uh, stop lines, pedestrian crossings, things like that. Um, what we call fre frequent, uh, frequently occurring stationary objects, like fire hydrants, bus stops, things like that. Um, and then we want to read the signs as well, like highway signs, for example. And then the idea here is all of this content will also be made available for OpenStreetMap. Um, our business plan is to charge for commercial use of this on the backside. But for OpenStreetMap, we give everything for free. Uh, and then we're working a lot uh, on when we're combining these images together, we're actually also computing 3D. And so we're working a lot on that right now. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll make a couple of uh, releases where uh, you can see that the 3D will improve um, the positioning of the photos, improve the viewing experience, and then also make it possible to measure distances and position things in the images. Um, so we're playing around with this right now. We have our own open source tool chain for this, OpenSFM. Um, and it's on GitHub BSD license if you want to play with it. And here's an example, uh, red original positions and uh, direction and green are the ones that are corrected uh, using the 3D reconstruction. And then on, um, on the viewer side, using this data, we can now actually, I don't know, is this playing? 
now it is. We can actually now position all of these photos in 3D space, and you can move from one to the other, sort of like you're, you're used to on, on Google Street View, except that this is now randomly collected. You can see different time of day. Uh, there's some gray days, some sunny days, and you can just move around in this space. Photos collected randomly by users that have no connection. They just happen to be mapping the same street. Here's the other way going back. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I had to talk about. So we have time for lots of questions. Yes. Sorry. Is there a way to um, associate this with a geocoder? So you can actually go to particular locations um, and pull up the map? So the question was, uh, is there a way to associate this with a geocoder so you can go to an address? And yes, there is. Uh, we're using Nominatim uh, with not so great results. Um, eventually, we'll have to figure out something else, I think. I'm sorry, what are you using? Nominatim. Okay. Is that the right way to pronounce it? <laughs> Someone? What is the size of these um, uh, JPEG files you have? How many terabytes or megabytes, gigabytes? So the size of the image files? Um, the entire data set? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's 50, 60 terabytes right now, I think. Not, not exactly sure. It's, uh, we've grown a lot the last couple of months. I don't have the, the latest numbers. Um, but we do, like when you use our apps, we take the highest resolution uh, photo possible every two seconds uh, because yeah, we prefer that you can zoom in and read signs and get the details from the photo. So the files are actually quite big um, and we keep the originals uh, for extracting and doing computer vision. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's about uh, 19 million images right now. 500,000 kilometers. Way within ID to be looking at a photo, uh, you know, you're talking about street signs, but if you were doing points of interest, you see a store that's not in the, you see a store on the photo, this would basically allow for virtual or remote mapping of a place. Is there a way within ID not only to tag the place, but to reference back the image and say, uh, this is authoritative because I got this data from this image. So the question was, if you're editing something from one of the images, if you can reference that image as the source of that change set. And um, I don't think that's being done right now, uh, but there were several people actually asking the same thing outside at our table. And uh, if it's not being done, we, we should make it so. So I was just wondering about incentivizing people to use this and uh, I was thinking about how, you know, you have the integration with ID and how anyone can see stuff that other people have contributed and then take that data and make it part of OSM, which is awesome. I was wondering if, like, you could, like, complete the loop, I guess, and have people who are locals driving around with their own device and see their own stuff after passing through your system in ID so that, you know, if someone who's really interested in an area, they can go out, drive it, they don't have to, you know, because you're basically getting the ground truth without having to manually do it <laughs> and then confirming that it's correct. So I guess as a mapper, I might want to drive through my own town and not have to do all the manual annoying stuff. It'd be great if I could look at my own stuff after it's gone through your vision algorithms and then confirm that it's okay and put it in, you know what I mean? Yes, so you're asking if it's, if it's possible to take some of this and just auto-submit it to OpenStreetMap? Basically, I could see my own contributions to, oh. Ma to Map Pillory and then see them in IDE, basically, or, or ID, instead of, instead of being a random person getting someone else's random Map Pillory traces, I get my own because I care about the area that I traced. Okay, I get it now. So the question was, if 
if you can see your own uh, mapillary contributions in ID uh, and not see everyone else's. So you can on this site now, on mapillary you can. So you can go in and filter by user. I only want to see content from this username. Um, and it should be possible to put that in ID as well. Thank you. Um, how uh, restrictive um, are your requirements for the pictures? How, like, what's the maximum blurriness or what's the minimum resolution? Um, I'm thinking of when you're taking the pictures on the, uh, in the car or on a bicycle, like you're going to get blurry images. So how do you deal with that and what's your uh, minimum resolution or, or maximum amount of error in the picture? So the question was on restrictions for image quality, blurry images, resolution, things like that. Um, well, we do get blurry images sometimes, um, especially users who uh, uh, like sometimes if there's a focus problem or if they're driving and, and there's motion blur. Um, so we do get those sometimes. Um, also, it's easier to get um, motion blur if you're uh, Get, it's getting dark outside, for example, and uh, the shutter is not fast enough. Um, but we take those photos anyway. And we see it as our job to filter up the good ones and sort of suppress the bad photos. But in the absence of good photos, I think people would rather see the, the, the crappy photo uh, than nothing at all. Um, but yeah, we might draw the line somewhere, but we're not doing that today. And the other question about resolution, um, the higher the better, uh, but I mean, you need to take what's practical for you. So we support video, for example. You can upload video files uh, with an external GPS trace. Uh, and for video, uh, HD is not so great. It's, it's like a megapixel image, but we'd rather have that than nothing. Linking to Mapiri from OpenStreetMap, I happen to know that there were 111 objects as of this morning that have a Mapiri tag with the idea of a Mapiri photo. Now that, that's actually on an object. So this was like a street that had a, a, a photo of the street. Um, obviously, there's no reason you couldn't put it on a change set to indicate that that change set was based on the photo. Indeed, that's probably a better use of it than putting it on the object, I think. But uh, it certainly has been done. So there was a, a comment on some people tagging uh, objects with the mapillary tag. Uh, yes, we know that some people do, but uh, we don't require it. And so it's, it's really up to the person making that edit. But if we could do the suggested change of, of actually baking that into the change set, it, it would be much better for everyone, I think. Yeah. I could see this being really useful to enter in like speed limit information, routing, turn restrictions, things like that into OpenStreetMap. That's something that, you know, is really lacking and the community is really interested in. Has there any been any discussions around that yet? So uh, you're asking about if there's anyone mapping turn restrictions from the photos? Speed limits. Um, yeah, uh, I can see this being very useful. We, we for that. think so. We're not actively tracking the changes yet, um, but I think uh, we should. And I think it would be something that's very inspiring for the photographer to hear that your photo was used to fix this. Um, so we don't have any hard numbers on that, but I do know that some people use it for speed limits. Um, there was a there was a blog post or a link the other day about people mapping. Um, height of, of bridges and overpasses using uh, uh, imagery. Um, but yeah, we're not actively tracking it uh, because we can't really um, at the moment. To get that um, 360 degree view, does that require the users to take photos uh, at, from four different angles in the same position or do you do that on your side and you stitch them all together? 
so the question was if we require the user to take photos 360 degrees if you want to be able to see 360 degrees uh, there's no requirement the thing is uh, of course you can only look in the directions where people have taken photos but there's no requirement that you should take all of those directions so you could be driving one direction of the street and then I drive the other direction a week later and then you can look in those two main directions and then someone comes and takes photos on the right hand side a week after that then you can look right but not left so over time we combine all of these together and that's automatic you don't have to do anything about that uh, but you can take 360 if you want and we support that and we also support uh, photospheres and 360 cameras and there's a whole bunch of interesting consumer priced 360 cameras coming to the market now where uh, you could actually put it on a pole and ride around with your bike and you would get uh, nice 360 images uh, so yeah we support that as well information back because you're not the Sorry. one listed uh, thank you I have one I have one more with my information. I forgot oh, that one. Great. <laughs> Hello. Oh, um, are there concerns about faces, like uh, in the in the photos? I know Google blurs out faces in on Street View and things like that. So the question was if there are concerns about faces being visible and Google blurring faces. Um, well, yes, there are concerns, and we do blur faces. Uh, so from day one, we've had face blurring and license plate blurring uh, on all photos. And we don't show anything publicly on the site until we've applied those two. Um, but then no algorithm is perfect. So if we do miss a face, if we do miss a license plate, or if there's something else that's not easy for a machine to understand, might be sensitive privacy-wise, then anyone can go in uh, and hide that image or, or mark an area for blurring and blur it. So there's a, there's a human uh, after filter to the algorithms as well. Uh, can we upload aerial photos taken from UAV, for example? What will happen if I upload photo from UAV? Question was, can we upload aerial photos from drones? And... Uh, Yes, <laughs> you can upload. Uh, it doesn't mix well if you're flying at high altitude. So if you fly at low altitude, like the height of this room, for example, it mixes really well with the street level images. If you go higher than that, uh, you can still upload them, but I think at some point we're going to cut them into a separate aerial layer that you only see when you opt in to see it. The same happens when people take photos underground. It messes with everything. Um, but low-flying drones uh, would welcome that very much. Who, who owns the, the photos once they're taken? Is this open source or is this mapillary? So um, you, as a photographer, you own your own images. When you submit them to mapillary, you give us the right to do this, basically do whatever. Uh, but we also promise to uh, share the photos as Creative Commons. So we have CC by SA for all our photos on the site. And there's a tool to import them into Wikimedia Commons. The uh, question is, when you're browsing the map, you can turn on, there's a mapillary checkbox, and it shows rows that have, they're highlighted in blue, where you, I guess you've uh, established that there's imagery for that. I was wondering if uh, is that updated or you know when do the uh, non stuck to the road uh, you know lines snap to the to the roads? Does that make sense? Um, so the question was about uh, the blue lines on on the maps on Mapillary. Um, so there is a tick box for that, but that's actually a debug feature, and you shouldn't be able to see that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, Whoops. But uh, uh, it, it appears every now and then. Um, but the, the blue tiles are updated. Um, they should be updated continuously. Every time new data comes in, we regenerate the tiles. And we're doing it in two formats now. So the blue ones are the old 
Uh, and then we're also doing vector tiles now, and they're the ones that I showed on these slides that look uh, gray, blackish. Um, what was the other question? That was it. Okay, good. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Now. <laughs>